Should you invest an extra $100 and go with the Ender 3 version 2 versus the original Ender 3? Well, let's have a look. Chris here, and I have to admit, I'm just a little bit Ender 3 crazy. I have had a lot of experience on the Ender 3, and I've seen many iterations of the machine as they've worked to improve it. But now we have V2. It is just a bit fancier and has a few more features, but it's also $100 US more than the original model. So I thought it would be fun if we took a side-by-side -side look at these two machines, see what you're getting for that extra bit of cash, and check out a lot of the new features that you're going to get on the V2 model. Now it is important to note that I haven't had this printer that long, so I haven't had time to do a full battery of tests on the V2. I can't really tell you whether it's good or bad, but it is a fair side-by-side -side comparison with the original model, because this Ender 3 has only done around 7 prints. I want to show you what it's going to be like for these fresh out of the box, no modifications, to a brand new user. So let's get started with just a bit of a rundown of both machines. So here we have version 1, the tried and true Ender 3 that probably a whole lot of us already know about. It is advertised as a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build volume. It is actually just a bit bigger than that. And since this is a newer Ender 3, you do get a few more things on this one that you didn't on some of the original Ender 3s, like these removable sheets. It's not magnetic, you still do have to use clips, but it's a piece of plastic with their build surface on top, so it does make things easier to remove. Something also worth mentioning on some of the newer models of the original Ender 3, you do get a silicone sock for your heat block that wasn't on some of the original models. You have your 12864 screen with the click wheel, your generic 24 volt power supply stuck here on the side, it does have a fan on it. The standard Creality Design hot end where your PTFE tube runs all the way down to the nozzle and your Mark 8 style extruder with the plastic extruder arm. It does utilize only the single lead screw on the left hand side. And something that will be important to note as we move to the V2, on the original Ender 3, the Y is supported by a 2040 extrusion. And if we take a look inside the control box, we have the standard Creality board, it does have A4988 stepper drivers, and it still has that old Atmel 128 processor. It does run Marlin, but there's not a whole lot of memory on this chip for improvements. So there's a basic rundown of the Ender 3 that we all know and love. But I did hear a rumor that Creality might start using 32-bit boards on all of their Ender machines. And if that happens, that'll add a lot of value to this original version. So. Fingers crossed that there's some truth to that. Now onto the V2. And here's the V2, and they've changed up quite a bit, but let's start with the bed and we'll just kind of work our way around. You don't lose any build volume on the V2, it is still 220, 220, 250 millimeters. On the bed you do now get a glass sheet, and it has this textured coating on it that Creality says they've developed that's better than other coatings but it does resemble Ultra Base from any cubic, and it works kind of the same way. It grips pretty well, leaves an interesting texture on the parts, but then as it cools off, the parts come off pretty easy. It isn't my favorite build surface, I prefer something like PEI, but it is a glass sheet, so it's gonna be just a little bit flatter, but it does add a lot of mass to the Y carriage. The extruder setup is almost exactly the same as the original version. You do get this fancy knob to help you advance your filament, but it's the same plastic handled Mark 8 extruder arm with the Bowden setup and the same hot end with the PTFE tube that goes all the way to the nozzle. This was probably the biggest disappointment about the V2. I think they should have upgraded this part as well, at least gone with a metal arm. But it still does work. And as far as the hot end, you do get this respirator like cover that goes over it, but you're still getting the same fan and part fan, and the hot end's identical to all the other models just looks a little fancier. Again, you do get that silicone sock. You have that same single start lead screw design for your Z. You do get belt tensioners for your X and Y. And it's probably not that big of an upgrade. You can just print these parts out and create your own. But it is interesting that Creality has thought of some of the modifications that were common on these printers and tried to add them to the upgrade version. You also do get this cool little drawer down here and it will hold five benchies. Or, you know, you could put your tools in it if you wanted to. 
Remember we talked about that Y extrusion on the V1? It's a 20 by 40. Well in V2 you get a 40 by 40. And that's going to give the carriage just a little bit wider stance when it's rolling back and forth. So if there's one upgrade that's probably going to help your prints, it's actually this one. And we do get this fancy colored screen. Now it's not touchscreen, you still do have to use the click wheel. But it is a really good looking setup. It is kind of at an odd angle. I would like it to be just a little bit adjustable, maybe forward and back. It seems like it's leaned a little too far back for me, but maybe that's something they'll change up in the future. The menus look good, all the features are here. It is a machine that is backed by Marlin. And I do understand that there is another newer version out there of this firmware because there are a few bugs like the Z height measurement and file length. So they are developing it. So that's a good sign. All in all, a pretty nice screen and interface. Not something that's super important to me. I think the old LCD is fine, but a lot of people like to see things like this. And you'll notice they have moved the power supply to down here underneath the cover down below, as well as just kind of enclose the whole machine. So you've got your power supply, You've got your receptacle and your switch over here. So all this is closed in, giving it a nicer look. The Y end stop switch now has a case. You can't see the plugs or wires anymore. And the wire management is much improved. That's something I always struggle with on the other Ender 3s. When you want to move it, you always end up setting it down on some of the wires. And they have fixed that. So that's a bonus. But the real question is, what kind of board's inside here? Let's just take a look. So it's pretty much your standard layout Creality board. It is a custom board they created. This says it's the version 4.2.2. These do have silent stepper drivers, they're TMC 2209s, and this machine is pretty quiet. It's pretty much all fan noise. But right here is your ARM chip. That is an STM32 F103. So they finally upgraded to the 32-bit processor, so now you have access to all the features your heart desires. And if we're going to take covers off and look around at everything, we might as well take the power supply out just to check and see what type it is. And my hopes have been confirmed. It is a genuine Meanwell supply, an LRS a 35024. So definitely a higher end power supply than the original. And last but not least, it might seem kind of silly, but I actually like these extended rubber feet that they put on the bottom. It gives you a little bit of gap underneath the machine. It just feels more solid when you set it down. So that's a nice upgrade. So now we've seen some of the features on V2, and it does come with silent stepper drivers. So being able to compare these to see if you're gonna get your money's worth on the upgraded board, we might as well just see how quiet they are. So let's compare them. So the V2 definitely wins in the quiet department. Now a lot of the noise on an Ender 3 is all the fan noise. So the silent stepper drivers do help out some on version 2, but you're still going to have some pretty aggressive fans there. I also did want to mention both these machines have power loss recovery that utilizes the SD card, so no change on that feature. Now I want to take a look at some prints and compare how the V1 does versus the V2. Now remember, these are stock machines. I use the same G-code on both prints, even the same SD card. No changes there, and there's no modifications. These are fresh out of the box. So let's take a look. So let's start with the V1. We have our Benchy print. You notice you can see that water line pretty prominently. That's pretty common to certain slicers. These were all done in Prusa Slicer using the Ender 3 profile they have now. You can see some candy striping. This is caused by certain stepper drivers. Pretty common on the cheaper stepper drivers, especially the A4988s. A pretty respectable print, all in all. We have a good first layer. Top layers look really good. But this is what I would expect out of the box quality on an Ender 3. Moving on to our Maker's Muse tolerance test. Now this one kind of threw me for a loop, but I was able to free all of them on the Ender 3 V1. I really wasn't expecting it to be that accurate, 
but I did have almost a perfect first layer, so that probably helped as well. But I kind of suspect that there's a bit of under extrusion on this. I wouldn't have expected it to come out this well, but it is what it is. I went ahead and did one of these 30 millimeter test cubes just to see how accurate it might be. We hit 30 almost dead on in the X, a little over 3 tenths shy on the Y, and almost 3 tenths shy in the Z. Not too far off. And our torture cube, it is a bit stringy. It did complete. We do have a few points where the layers didn't get laid down just as nice as they could have been, but not a bad attempt for a $170 printer. And then we move on to V2. The deck line that you see on the Benchy, it's a lot less prominent on the V2 print. It's all around a better looking print, actually. You don't have that candy striping because there's a lot higher quality stepper driver on there. The finishes look really good. No under extrusion to really speak of. Nice finishes all around. A really good Benchy. Definitely better than the V1. And now onto the tolerance test for our V2. We did get the 5, the 4, and the 3, but we didn't quite get the 2. And the center and 1.5 are definitely locked up. This is more like what I would expect to see on this type of printer. Again, these are the same exact G codes, no differences at all. The first layer looks pretty good. In fact, the 5 kind of wants to fall out of there. But tolerance not out of scope for an Ender style machine. And then our test cube, about a tenth shy on the X almost dead on on the Y, and about four tenths short on the Z. And then our V2 torture cube, a lot less stringing than on the V1, but I would say the layer consistency is about the same. You do see that same rough area. You can see it underneath the bars as it's trying to do the print, but not a real stellar improvement over V1. In fact, if I had to pick one, V1 or V2, as which is the better print, I might give that one to the V1. So that's pretty much what we ended up with. And again, I didn't do a lot of rigorous print for print testing, and these are pretty much fresh out of the box. But if I had to choose today based on print quality, I would go with version two. But that's mainly based on the stepper driver that they use on this board. The older drivers did have a few issues with artifacts, like I showed you on the side of that Benchy. Other than those, the print quality on version 1 is just fine. But those drivers and that 32-bit board kind of sell the V2 for me. Now, I do think the V2 is missing a few things, like some metal extruder parts, maybe even dual extruder gears, and a filament runout sensor. You see all of those pretty much on every machine that's coming out now. But for just a hundred bucks more, if you just want to print on the machine, you get set up quickly and have a pretty consistent experience, I think the V2 is worth it. But if you want to hack and tweak and mod like a lot of us do, I still think you should go with the V1. There's a huge community around it, it's very affordable, there's all kinds of change out parts that you can get, and it's a lot of fun to do. So the choice is yours, but I think the V2 does have a place in the market. Now, is it the Ender 3 to rule them all, including all of the clones that are out there? I don't think it is, and you will see why in future videos. Hopefully you like this video, and I will see you again real soon on the next one.